In the early 1980s, the MSD SD2 Super Disk Drive was one of a series of five and a quarter floppy disk drives made by Microsystems Development, or MSD, in Dallas, Texas. For some, the MSD SD2 is considered one of the holy grails of Commodore compatible 8 bit drives and early third party hardware. Released in 1983, supposedly MSD's drives have the notable distinction of being the very first third party devices designed to be used with the Commodore 64. There were two models the SD1, which was a single drive unit, and the top end SD2, which we're looking at today. Being so early in the C64's lifespan, MSD decided the super disk drives would include both an IEEE 488 parallel interface as well as dual custom Commodore serial interfaces. This means the MSD drives are plug and play and ready to go, not just with the VIC-20, C64, and C128, but also the Commodore PET without the need of any special adapters. However, with the addition of MSD's optional and custom IEEE interface for Commodore 64, which plugged into the expansion port, users could obtain enormous transfer speed gains over the 1541 on the Commodore 64 and 128 computers. These drives were popular in the 1980s due to their impressive speeds, but even more so due to their incredible disk copying capabilities, which we'll look at a bit more here in a minute. Right off the bat, the MSD SD2 was the only dual drive option out there for the VIC-20 and beyond. Commodore had eventually drawn up a dual drive prototype in the mid 80s called the 1572, but it was never brought to market. The MSD drives were built like tanks with professionally painted solid metal cases instead of plastic. And these drives are as heavy as bricks. Bricks made of metal. In fact, my MSD SD2 super heavyweight George Foreman drive tops the scales at a whopping 14 pounds, two ounces. The MSD SD2 came with its own microprocessor and memory. It included a 16K operating system and 6K RAM buffer. Only 4K came on the SD1. It has a microprocessor based disk controller, dual Commodore serial bus interfaces, an IEEE parallel bus interface, and internal jumpers to select the device number. The C64 came with BASIC 2. The C128 came with BASIC 7. The MSD drives came with BASIC 4. Therefore, there are some basic commands you can perform from disk to disk. With the SD2, you can't even perform between two 1541s, like the copy command. Due to the differences with the onboard DOS, incompatibilities are a thing. Commercial disks that use certain types of copy protection, fast loaders, or 1541 specific features do not work with the MSD Super Disk Drives. However, the MSD SD2 is capable of being upgraded with Jiffy DOS, as well as third-party ROMs called the CLD Disk Duplicator, which transform the SD2 into the ultimate copy party battle station. The SD2 can already copy quickly from one disk to another, but it can be converted into a professional disk cloning device. Ironically, you may need to actually load and run that copied floppy on a different drive later though. The SD2 consists of a PSU, a controller board, and two TEC360K PC floppy drive mechanisms. They were modified by MSD to be compatible with the GCR recording format used by all Commodore floppy disk drives at that time. And like a lot of old tech, the caps on these ancient drives are notorious for leaking. My SD2 needed work when I got it in 2022. Both of my drive mechanisms in the TEC FB501 drives needed to be reworked. All polarized electrolyte capacitors on both analog boards and both spindle drive boards needed replacing and the smaller electrolytic capacitors on the mainboard also needed to be replaced. Interestingly, 
at least to me. My SD2 has a professionally installed selector switch on the back that changes the drives from 8 to 9. The original owner of my drive was in Texas, and it makes me wonder if he got his fancy upgrade from the source in Dallas. The case looks to have had its switch hole punched out by the factory with a really slick switch added. Not the typical long metal things hanging out the vents from a dangling wire or some other janky but functional DIY hack. You might be wondering, there are dual drives, so how does this switch selector thing even work? It's actually pretty interesting. The SD2 is seen as two drives under a single drive ID number. You can set both drives to either 8 or 9. You can't, however, set one of the drives to 8 and the other to 9. The SD2 powers up in a Drive 0 and Drive 1 configuration, where both are seen as device ID 8 or 9. Naturally, the syntax is a little bit different than we're used to. For example, in order to examine the directory of a disk, the syntax would be like this. To load the directory of a disk in drive one, I would need to type the following. See what we did there? The drives aren't eight and nine, they're eight zero and eight one. If no drive number is specified after the dollar sign, both directories will be loaded into the computer. To use our common lodestar command on the SD2, it would be like this. One of the most fascinating and frankly kick-ass features of the MSD SD2 is the ability to convert the machine into a standalone mass duplicator. Since the MSD Super Disk Drive uses its own CPU and DOS, it can format disks in a stunning nine seconds. You can even format two disks simultaneously in the same amount of time. It can back up a disk in a shocking 15 seconds, including verification. There are also Nibbler programs for copy-protected disks. But by swapping out the original ROMs with chip-level designs, CLD, mass duplicator ROMs, and installing a RAM chip upgrade, the machine can copy unprotected disks all by itself. The drive will automatically detect disks being inserted and removed. To my joy and surprise, I discovered my SD2 already had the RAM upgrade installed. I honestly have no idea why the previous owner would have done that. It's possible MSD provided that upgrade as a form of future proofing. Or possibly it provides a mild speed boost in normal operating mode. I really don't know. I also don't know how this beast got the absolutely pro ID switch. Regardless, my machine only needed the U5 and U6 ROMs to be swapped out to become a mass duplicator. When we insert two disks and close both latches, it just starts cloning a disk all on its own and can be completely untethered from any computer or monitor. And it does it really fast. The green power light will blink and the drive will make a faint clicking sound as it awaits the disks. As each disk is inserted, the red drive, zero, and one lights will come on. When it has finished the backup, the power light will blink again. Remove both disks and repeat the process for as long as your party lasts. There's also an auto nibbler, which will copy protected disks in 18 seconds. If you have a stack of unprotected disks, the mass dupe function is awesome. All the folks who made and sold copy software loved the MSD devices for obvious reasons. As a result, their software was made to support it too. The Cracker Jacks copy programs written specifically for the MSD SD2 are the ones you would need. They even made one that works specifically on the C128 and takes advantage of the extra memory of the C128. Pretty effing sweet though. So come over to my house this Saturday night and bring your discs and let's get that copy party started. So remember guys, keep all that Commodore love flowing and we'll see you next time. Bye-bye.